Key tutorial number 2, Defining Imp, Lesson 1. Here we learn how to define a more complex language syntax than lambdas, namely the C-like syntax of Imp. Also, we will learn how to define languages using multiple modules, because we are going to separate Imp's syntax from its semantics using modules. Finally, we will also learn how to use case built-in support for syntactic lists. The K tool provides modules for grouping language features. In general, we can organize our languages in arbitrarily complex module structures. While there are no rigid requirements or even guidelines for how to group language features in modules, we often separate the language syntax from the language semantics in different modules. In our case here, we start by defining two modules, imp syntax and imp, and import the first in a second using the keyword imports. As their names suggest, we will place all imp syntax definition in imp syntax and all its semantics in imp. Note, however, that k does no more than simply includes all the contents of the imported module in the one which imports it, making sure that everything is only kept once even if you import it multiple times. In other words, there is currently nothing fancy in K-Tools module system. IMP has six syntactic categories, AXP for arithmetic expressions, BXP for boolean expressions, BLOCK for blocks, STMT for statements, PGM for programs, and IDS for comma-separated lists of identifiers. Blocks are special statements whose role is to syntactically constrain the conditional statement and the while loop statement to only take blocks as branches and body respectively. There is nothing special about arithmetic and boolean expressions. They are given the expected strictness attributes except for less than or equal to and logical end for demonstration purposes. The less than or equal to is defined to be sequentially strict, which means that it evaluates its arguments in order from left to right. Like strict, the SEQ strict annotation can also be configured. For example, one can specify in which arguments and in what order. By default, SEQ strict refers to all the arguments in their left to right order. In our case here, it is equivalent to SEQ strict of 1, 2. The logical end is only strict in its first argument because we will give it a short circuited semantics. Its second argument will only be evaluated when the first evaluate is to true. In this tutorial, we take the freedom to associate the various constructs parsing precedences that we have already tested and we know work well, so that we can focus on the semantics here instead of syntax. In practice though, we typically need to experiment with precedences until you obtain the desired parser. Blocks are defined using curly brackets and they can either be empty or hold a statement. Nothing special about the imp statements. Note that semicolon is an assignment statement terminator not a statement separator. Not also that blocks are special statements. An imp program declares a comma separated list of variables using the keyword int, like in C, followed by a semicolon, followed by a statement. Syntactically, the idea here is that we can wrap any imp program within a main function declaration and get a valid C program. Imp does not allow variable declarations anywhere else except through this construct, at the top level of the program. Other languages provided with the K distribution, see for example the Imp++ language also discussed in this tutorial, remove this top level program construct of Imp and add instead variable declaration as a statement construct, which can be then used anywhere in the program, not only at the top level. Note how we define the comma separated list of identifiers using list of ID and comma. The K-Tool provides built-in support for generic syntactic lists. These lists can also be empty, that is, in programs declaring no variable also allowed. For example, int, semicolon, and the empty block is a valid in program. To instantiate and use the K built-in lists, you should alias each instance with a typically fresh non-terminal in your syntax, like we do with the IDS non-terminal. Like with other K features, there are ways to configure the syntactic lists, but we do not discuss them here. Recall from the first tutorial on Lambda that in order for strictness to work well, we also need to tell K which computations are meant to be results. We do this as well now in the module imp. Integers and booleans are K results. Compile imp.k and test the generated parser by running some programs. Since imp is a fragment of C, you may want to select the C mode in your editor when writing these programs. 
This will also give you the feel that you are writing programs in a real programming language. For example, here is sum.imp which sums in sum all numbers up to n. Now k run it and see how it looks parsed in the default case L. The program collats.imp tests the collats conjecture for all numbers up to m and accumulates the total number of steps in S. Finally, program primes.imp counts in S all the prime numbers up to M. All the programs above will run once we define the semantics of imp. If you want to execute them now, just wrap them in a main function and compile them and run them with your favorite C compiler. This is just C. Before we move to the case semantics of imp, we would like to make some clarifications regarding the built-in K parser, cast. Also, it is quite powerful, thanks to the SDF system upon which it builds, you should not expect magic from it. While the K parser can parse many non-trivial languages, see for example the cool language in K examples in the K distribution, it was never meant to be a substitute for real parsers. We often call the syntax defining K the syntax of the semantics to highlight the fact that its role is to serve as a convenient notation when writing the semantics, not necessarily as a means to define concrete syntax of arbitrarily complex programming languages. See the kernel C language in K examples for an example on how to connect an external parser for concrete syntax to the K-tool. The above being said, I personally strongly encourage you to strive to make the built-in parser work with your desired language syntax. Do not give up simply because you don't want to deal with syntactic problems. On the contrary, fight for your syntax. If you really cannot define your desired syntax because of two limitations, we would like to know. Please tell us. Note that the SDF community has managed to define grammars for many real languages like C and Java and the k-parser builds up on SDF, so everything is there for you to parse complex languages. Until now, we have only seen default configurations. In the next lesson, we will learn how to define a k-custom configuration.